हेलो गाइस, आई होप यू ऑल आर डूइंग गुड आई एम विशाली की कान एंड वी आर डिस्कसिंग द वी टेक्नोलॉजी इन दैट वी आर डिस्कसिंग द एचिंग प्रोसेस टुडे इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द वेरियस टाइप्स ऑफ एचिंग द सिंगल क्रिस्टल एचिंग द पॉलिसिलिकन एचिंग एंड द मेटल एचिंग सो टूडे इज वीडियो इज गोइंग टू बी द रियली इंटरेस्टिंग वन एंड आई होप यू विल बी गेटिंग अ लॉट ऑफ न्यू इन्फॉर्मेशन टिल द एंड ऑफ दिस वीडियो सो आई होप यू विल बी स्टेइंग विद मी टिल द एंड एंड you will be able to understand all of the types of the etching processes so first of all we are going to start with the single crystal silicon etching so what is single crystal silicon etching we are etching out the single crystal silicon wafer so why we are etching it to make the short trench isolation why we were making the short trench isolation so that we will be having the two transistors or two mosfets which are not shorted out to each other if i don't make the isolation between the two devices is they will be getting shorted okay so to avoid this possibility i make the shallow trench isolation and again i can make the deep trench capacitor as well so i am going to discuss about both of them the structures of both of them and the functioning also so again i can use the hard mass the silicon nitride and the oxide etching also so we can have the photoresist which may cause the substrate contamination so this possibility we have to remove so we have to make this single crystal silicon etching very carefully we have to avoid the contamination with the photoresist and i use the bromine so i should know the bromine chemistry also in the previous classes i was discussing about the fluorine chemistry because there i was using the fluorine as the agent here i will be using bromine so i should understand the bromine chemistry as i am using hbr as the main agent hydrogen bromide is our main agent present here okay so you can see here we have here the single crystal silicon etching which is making the shallow trench isolation okay so this shallow trench isolation is formed when i have etched out the silicon layer so that this transistor and one more transistor which might present here which will will not be getting shorted out so i am making the silicon etching for this purposes so i hope now you understood in the cmos cross section where i am using the silicon etching or the single crystal silicon etching now i can make the capacitor also so first of all i have to make the deep trench so first of all this is my photoresist okay so i will be making a mask with the photoresist how i will be making this mask with the photolithography process after the photolithography process i will be having the hard mask present here after that i will be using the hydrogen bromide and i will be making a deep trench and i will be etching out the silicon to make this trench then i will be keeping here silicon dioxide or any dielectric which will be separating the heavily doped silicon so this is how we are making the capacitor what is a capacitor Cap capacitor are two metallic plates or two conducting plates which are separated by a dielectric and here also the heavily doped silicon will be acting like a conductor and here the silicon dioxide will be acting like a dielectric and as a whole this structure will be acting like a capacitor so now coming to the facts about bromine because here we are going to use the bromine as the agent okay so its uh, name is bromine that we know symbol is br atomic number 35 atomic weight around 79.5 9.904 discovered by Antoine J Ballard and discovered at France in 1826 so you can see all of the other parameters origin of name molecular weight velocity of sound resistivity refractive index melting point boiling point thermal conductivity application so it is uh, used as the main agent for single crystal silicon etching process and the source is hydrogen bromide so now coming to the reactions hydrogen bromide will be dissociating in the plasma and it will be generating hydrogen and the bromine atom the bromine atom will be reacting with the silicon and it will be forming the sibr4 
okay so we can easily remove this by product SIBr4 so if I am using small amount of oxygen also so it will be uh, used as the side wall passivation the output uh, the silicon bromide the SIBr4 will not deposit on the side walls for that I am using the oxygen O2 gas a little NF3 also used for preventing the formation of the black silicon okay so I have to use O2 and NF3 I cannot calculate an end point with the help of any physical device I have to calculate the end point with the time only so I know the rate with the rate I can calculate if I have to remove the particular depth in what time it can be removed so end point can be calculated with the time now coming to the polysilicon edge why I am using the polysilicon edge for making the gate and the local interconnection okay so if I want to make the interconnection of the gate with the metal or local interconnection so I will be using the polysilicon edge okay so it is the most critical etching process because I have to make the smallest feature size okay so here I have to have a very controlled etching okay so here I can use the capacitor electrodes for DRAM and it requires very high selectivity over silicon dioxide if it is not having very high selective selectivity over silicon dioxide then I can etch out silicon dioxide layer also with the polysilicon layer which we don't want so we require high selectivity okay so here we will be using uh, the chlorine atom the chlorine atom will be reacting with the silicon and it will be forming the SiCl4 so for that I should know the facts about chlorine its symbol is Cl atomic number 17 atomic weight 35.45 around and discoverer was Carl William uh, Shelley and discovered at Sweden in 1774 and you can see all of uh, the other parameters like original of molar volume velocity of sound resistivity refractive index melting point boiling point thermal conductivity and applications it is used as a main etchant for the polysilicon and for the metal etching processes also we will be seeing how it is used in the metal etching also for the polysilicon epitaxial silicon deposition and the chamber cleaning also so for all of them we can use the sources are cl2 as well as hcl so now you can see here we have the polysilicon so if I want to etch out this polysilicon I am using the chlorine so this is uh, the figure that I wanted to show you so that at least you know where I am using the polysilicon etch so Cl2 is the main etchant here we are using HBr for the side wall passivation I don't want uh, the side walls to be formed for that I will be using the H HBr okay it, uh, again for the blocking mechanism also HBr is used if I am using oxygen gas also so in the over H it will be improving the selectivity to silicon dioxide uh, that, that I have already told you that what I need I require high selectivity towards silicon dioxide that I can uh, very well do with the help of addition of the oxygen gas so high select selectivity over SiO2 is required okay so here you can see if we have the gate oxide present here over the gate oxide I may be having the polysilicon to etch out the polysilicon I am using the chlorine atom the chlorine atom will be reacting with this polysilicon and it will be forming the SiCl4 to etch out it okay so now when the polysilicon is etched out the side wall may be developed over the silicon dioxide layer and this is uh, the side wall you can see the pink layer this is the polysilicon side wall present on the SiO2 layer okay so this is undesirable we have to avoid its formation and for that we are using HBr as well as we are using the O2 to improve the selectivity so I hope now you understood it now coming to the uh, process so now coming to the process steps so coming to the breakthrough in the breakthrough we are removing the native oxide layer how we are removing the native oxide layer with the help of energetic argon ion bombardment so it will be removing the oxide layer the main agent here is chlorine plus we are using HBr also so how we are calculating the end point with the help of oxygen atoms if I have the over H we have to reduce the power and then we have to add oxygen gas for highly high selectivity over the SiO2 so that SiO2 will not etch out in the case of over H 
Now coming to the metal etching. Metal etching is used to etch out titanium nitride or aluminium copper alloy or titanium metal stack to form the metal interconnection. We are using Cl2 plus BCl3. Okay, so we need to etch away the copper in aluminium either physically or chemically. So if I have the copper present in the metal that I have to take special care of and I have to remove it specially. So we need to strip off the photoresist before the wafer exposure to the moisture present in the atmosphere because whenever we have moisture present in the atmosphere it will be reacting with the photoresist okay. So I have to avoid that possibility also. So you can see over here uh, where we are using the metal etch we are here making the metallic interconnection and for that we have to etch out metals from here. So now this is the second metallic layer and here we are doing the metal etching. So uh, what I am doing, I am uh, removing out the metal layer, I am making the metal interconnections, I am removing the titanium nitride, aluminium, copper alloy or the tit uh, titanium. So now the chlorine is used as the main agent, I can use BCL3 and nitrogen gas also for the sidewall passivation. Oxygen gas is used to improve the selectivity. Now here are the challenges. First challenge is to control the etch profile, okay, so in the case of metals, how we can uh, remove the metals, that is a difficult task, so if I want to etch a particular layer of the metal in the particular direction, that is difficult, so etch profile need to be highly controlled and we have to control the residues as well, so etch residues must be avoided. So the metal grain size can affect the etch process. If I have higher metal grain size, the etching can be made isotropic. So if I want to make an isotropic etching, then I have to go with the smaller metal grain size. So you can see the chemistry. Cl2 will be dissociating in the plasma to form the chlorine atom. The chlorine atom will be reacting with the aluminium to form AlCl3. The chlorine atom will be reacting with the titanium nitride to form TiCl4 plus nitrogen. The chlorine will be reacting with the titanium to form TiCl4. So now a question for you, if I want to remove the gold, how I can remove the gold? Let's think about it and uh, if you have any doubt, you can put the doubt in the comment. If you want to refer some books, you can refer these books. These are all amazing books. And if you want to discuss about the gold, okay, so gold is a nut uh, atom, it, it is not easily reacting with any of the chemical, okay, so how I can remove the gold? So I will be uh, using some another way, okay, so I will be removing the gold with the help of the passive technique, okay, I cannot use the direct technique because the chemicals are not reacting with it. Okay, or I cannot give a very high temperature also. Why? Because if I am providing a very high temperature, then it might affect the wafer. Okay, that I don't want. So let's think about it and let's discuss in comment how we can etch out the gold as a metal. So I hope you like this session. If you like it, please push the like button, subscribe to the channel and also do share it with your friends. Thank you so much.